Again, this week we will be looking at another presence sensor. This time we will be looking at everything presence light from Lewis or everything smart home. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Although that would be also a fun video, I will not be going through all the mails and problems Luis and I had with delivery of that sensor. Actually, it ended up getting returned. But through a lot of effort on the Luis side, I managed to get my hands on one of them just at the time it was officially released. For all of you that do not know, Everything Smart Tech is a company created by Everything Smart Home, Luis and his dad. And they have currently released two versions of the sensor. Everything Presence 1, which is a big brother to the sensor that we will be covering in today's video. But let's start with obvious, and this is the specs of the sensor. I will not be going into size spec, although the device itself is pretty small. One thing that makes big difference between this sensor and all the other sensor, be it commercial or DIY sensors that I've seen so far, is the ability to use one of the five currently supported millimeter wave sensors. Price of this sensor is 34 euros, and in the kit you receive the printed 3D case, which I also printed in resin just for fun, and it worked awesome until I broke it, but that's a different story. Then you also received angled USB-C cable, some call it right angle, but I plug it on the left side, so for me it is left angled, because this is a USB-C connector, so you can flip it around and make it right or left. Included in the kit is, of course, the custom PCB with the ESP32 board on it. And that board also features ambient light sensing, plus maybe the coolest thing of all, the ability to replace the sensors themselves. So far, five of those boards are supported. During my testing, I tested it with two boards, because I only had two boards. One that arrived with this sensor, and that is this LD2450. And also, I used the light version of the millimeter wave sensor from Seed Studio. That is also the board that I tested previously and created video on. So everything you need is included in the box. What is great about this type of the sensor, besides that it is Y5 and not a Zigbee, so you don't need any coordinator to hook it up to your system, is that it also runs ESP Home. And by running ESP Home, it means that the updates can be pushed very easily over the air, all Home Assistant systems should support it if you have access point on your network and that it's very easy to both compile, upload the firmware, but also get it working with Home Assistant. If you've seen Everything Presence 1 and the documentation, the same documentation is available for the Everything Presence Lite. And everything you need to start with the sensor is available here. Hardware overview gives you overview of the hardware board, information, supported devices, and as I said, currently five devices are supported. We have information about the provided microwave sensor. Then you have information on how to assemble the case, how to install the board, how to plug in the sensor, the one that is provided, and more or less, that's everything you need to know about the assembly. Hook up the device and then go through the firmware update or firmware install process. Click on connect select from the prop-up the port where your device is connected and press install to install the firmware. This process can take up to two minutes. And this is it. Click next, select from the drop-down list your Wi-Fi network or just type in your access point SSID and password. Click connect and this should be it. When the Wi-Fi is connected, click on Add to Home Assistant, check that your instance URL is correct, and click on Open Link. Click on OK, select Device from the list, Submit, and select an area. Finish. The device has been now successfully added to Home Assistant. If the device was not auto-discovered, you can also add it by hand. For that, go to Settings, Integrations, Add Integration, Type in ESP Home. And if device is not listed, just type in the host IP address and you can leave the default port 6053. Click Submit 
and device should be discovered and added to your home assistant. Now let's check what you get when you install EP light inside your home assistant. Because this is where the fun part begins. Go to your ESP home integrations page and find in the list everything presence light. Here you have option to turn on and off the LED, to tweak the distance, timeout for occupancy, zone 1 beginning and end for XY, but also configure three additional zones. The zone functionality currently is in a beta version, but you can already play with it. All you have to do is you have to enable the entities inside Home Assistant for as many zones as you want. And remember to enable beginning X, beginning Y, end Y and end X for any zone that you want to enable. After that, you just have to tweak the numbers here. But besides controls for the X, Y, we also have additional sensors. From additional sensor, EP light has illuminance sensor. It has occupancy sensor. This is overall occupancy independent of the zone itself. Then we have the information if the target zone is active. Target one is active here. We have angle information. This is the angle where we look at the sensor. This is currently 12% above. We have distance and resolution. Then we also have target speed. Target speed can be either positive or negative. From what type tested, negative values means that the object is moving towards the sensor and positive values means that the distance is increasing or that the object is moving away from the sensor. We have information about the target 1, X and Y coordinates. And then same thing for the target 2, target 3. Then we have information about the zone occupancy. If you have set the different zones, here you can see what zone of all the zones that you have created is occupied. I currently have set only one zone, so that zone is currently on. And we only have one object in that zone. Zone 2 is currently unoccupied and it's also not set, so we have target 0 here. And the last part is configuration part, when we can reboot the device, calibrate the illuminance and see if there is a newer version of firmware or not. And this can be example of how it looks when you add it to your Home Assistant UI. We have information about the illuminance in the LUX. We have information about the occupancy. Is there any occupancy in any of the zones? It is detected. And then we have information about the zone 1 occupancy, zone 1 target count, zone 2 occupancy and zone 2 target count. What entities would you use if you want to add this to your automations? The answer is easy, depending if you have set up zones or not, you may either use only this occupancy, the occupancy for the first zone, and or combine it with the zone target count. Zone target count can give you information if it's more than one target in the occupied space or just one target, and also you can create automations based on that. For example, device, everything presence light, trigger can be zone 1 occupancy turned on and condition is numerical state zone 1 target count it has to be above 1 this means that this automation will be triggered when there is occupancy in the zone 1 but only if there are more than one targets in the area and of course you can add any service you want to add for example turn light off or on since we already have illuminance or lux sensor, we can add additional condition. In this case, we test if two condition matches. It needs to be target count for zone 1 above 1, 2 or higher. And also the illuminance sensor value should be below 40. Because if the value is under whatever value you want to put here, it's too dark and you want to turn the lights on if there are two people or pet and a person inside the room. Everything Presence Light is very interesting sensor and I do love the ability to change or replace the sensors based on what you think are the better MM Wave sensors. I've so far tested only two of those and I am keeping the one that originally arrived with it. Don't forget to read the documentation. It can really help you on setting up physical setup or installation of the device, but also to tune and make it work best in your environment. 
and since this is a ESP home based project, you can try and import the ESP home configuration inside your home assistant and also play with that. But the best thing of all is, as I've already mentioned, Bluetooth support as a Bluetooth proxy. So now I have additional Bluetooth proxy in my home. I think this is a fifth one. But the question is, is it worth buying this device? So far I've looked at a couple of those sensors and there are still one or two that will be arriving very soon and I will be testing them in the future. Yes, I really do like the sensor because once again this sensor is a bit different than all the other sensors I've tested. If I disregard the Sonoff and LimpTech that I did video last week and compare this for example with RoomSense IQ, each of those sensors has differences and I do not mean price differences. I mean differences in the capabilities. For example, this one is budget-friendly sensor, but it's also very powerful because I think that this is currently the only sensor that allows you to swap and find the best millimeter wave board for your own setup. Either the one that you already have, the one that is included, or some other that may end up being added to the supported list in the future. Second, as you can see, I've printed the box on my a resin printer. Yes, while you do buy a kit with everything included, if you have a 3D printer, if you don't like this color, you can opt out and print the case in whatever color you want on 3D printer. This one was printed on the resin printer and I wouldn't recommend doing that because the case needs a bit of tweaking to be able to print it perfectly on the resin printer. The shrinkage of the material, etc. While I did manage to set up everything, I still do prefer my 3D printed case much better. For more than half of the price of the Everything Presence 1, this is definitely a killer sensor for all of you that prefer Wi-Fi presence sensors. Let's talk about negative sides of this sensor. One thing that I would love to have is something similar as in RoomSense IQ, auto calibration, especially if that can help with the setup of zones. No, the zones are not that difficult, but you need to draw a map and then create the coordinates and then decide what zone will be in what coordinates. Entering the numbers, if you have already numbers, is easy. You can do that from the integrations page for your ESP Home device. And the second thing I do miss, yeah, but that's something that the Big Brother has, is temperature and humidity sensor. I know a lot of you will also say, yeah, but you know, the heat of the ESP32 board, the heat of the microwave or millimeter wave sensor will influence or impact the temperature and humidity. You can always do the calibration. No, this is not something that is required. This is something that people like me who prefer to have tons of data and create a statistical analysis of them would just prefer. But if I need those functionalities, I can go for the big brother. In the case of light, I don't miss the peer sensor. I don't think that it is necessary and since it impacts and influences the price overall, I would rather not have it than have much more expensive device itself. So check it out. The link to this device is as always in the video description and all the links that I can publish will be also included. Once again, I would like to thank Luis for sending me this device, for all of his contributions to the community and for being an awesome guy. Although Sometimes I'm having trouble with his accent. Just kidding. And before I wrap up the video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, commented or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do it by either becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month, the join button is down below, going to my merchandise store and getting something there, or just do a super thanks, and I will be super duper thankful for all of your support. I will be seeing you next time, until then, bye bye and have fun.